In this video, we're going to look at dimension reduction methods that are non-linear. So we're going to start with manifold learning using ISOMAP and manifold learning using LLE. So just to kind of help us understand how this works, when we use principal component analysis, when we're using, um, as we talked about in the previous videos, they use Euclidean distance. So they're a distance measure, which is why we do standard scalar when we do them. And um, the thing with the linear relationship and Euclidean distance is that it ignores the topography of the image. So suppose we have this really weird wishbone looking image here that you see on, on the right. And if we were looking at the relationship between a data point here and a data point here, Euclidean distance goes through a straight line. It assumes this linear relationship. The problem is, is it ignores the topography of the image. That is, this image has an outside boundary. And so this fact that it can't just go here to here is completely being ignored, right? It doesn't take into consideration um, what the actual um, framing of that image is, what those features are uh, of the image. So what we want when we're doing our image analysis is we often want something that is not going to use Euclidean distance. So if we're doing analysis where we need to take into consideration uh, the topography of the image, that shape or relationship of the greater image, whether we're looking at um, actual land and, and, and looking at, um, you know, elevation and, and the and domain, sorry, my brain is not working. Uh, we're looking at actually actual topography. Um, we would, would need this, or if we're looking at images, um, video, those types of things, then, then we would need to take into consideration uh, that there is some boundaries of the greater image. So, so for example, facial recognition, right? If we want to recognize faces, we need to recognize not just the distance between data points, but that there is a general shape that those data points have to live within. So when it comes to these methods, our manifold learning, the isomap approach is going to use geodesic distance. That's this one here. So it's going to look for the shortest distance between two points. It's not going to be bound by a straight line. It can have polynomial shape, so it can take into consideration uh, the uh, topography. Whereas LLE, local linear embedding, it also takes into consideration the topography. It also stays within the boundaries of the image, but it's not restricted to curves. So whereas the ISOMAP one is restricted to curves, the local linear embedding essentially uses nearest neighbors. And so it just does a, sm a, sm a short little movement in a small little line to see what's nearby and then a movement there to see what's near that. And so it kind of creeps along here to here to here to here as it's discovering the other data points and staying within the boundary. So these are manifold learning methods. Um, we use them when we want to take into consideration that topography of the image, when we want to do things like facial recognition because we need to identify um, not just the distance between one feature and another, but how it fits within uh, the rest of the shape. So let's take a look at how we would do that in our work here. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the Swiss roll. So as we look at these nonlinear methods, uh, there's this general data set called the Swiss roll, and it's because it looks like that kind of pastry dessert, um, the Swiss roll, and you can see that it is, you know, it's chocolate and cream, right? And so there's cream in the center and there's chocolate cake all around with cream wrapped because it gets rolled up. So that's what this data is. This data is a Swiss roll. So what I want to do is we want to look at if we use dimension reduction, are we able to capture uh, that makeup of the greater picture? Are we able to actually capture the role? Now, if we use principal component analysis, what we would get visually is what you see on the right. It explains about 71% of the data, so it's all right, but it doesn't really get at all of the relationships here because it is only considering um, this linear relationship. So what we wanna do is we wanna look at isomap 
and we want to look at our local linear embedding. So let's take a look at how to do that. All right, so first we can create the Swiss roll in Python. Uh, and uh, just a reminder, oh. in order to find this code, go to drstephpowers.github.io slash BIA. And we are doing dimension reduction here under chapter nine, predictive analytics, uh, because we're teaching this dimension reduction paired with cluster analysis, as you saw in the last video, uh, where we're looking at, can we identify um, particular groups that text belongs to, that people belong to. And so when we do that, then we can better understand what's happening with the text, uh, what's happening with the people. And of course, that the behavior and the events of one individual or event is likely to be like the others. Uh, to help us see what is going to happen and predict what's going to happen. But it's not it's not bound by predictive analytics. So we're just trying to find a way to group these. So let's go into our dimension reduction here. All right. So dimension reduction. We're going to import numpy as np. We're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt so that we can do some graphing. And we are going to import MPL underscore toolkits dot mplot 3D. This is so that we can create that 3D plot. And uh, from sklearn, we're importing data sets. That's because the Swiss roll data set uh, is from sklearn. So by doing that, we can bring it in. So the first set of code here, really, you don't have to mess with. This is just to create the Swiss roll. So what we're doing is we're creating a data set. We're making the Swiss roll. It's going to have 1,500 uh, data points. We're setting the random state at zero. It's going to have color and points. And then we're simply plotting it. And so this is setting the size of the, the graph. Um, it has a subplot. It is a 3D subplot. It is a scatter plot. So all of this is simply to change the axes and the formatting to create our Swiss roll. So we won't worry about that for now. We'll just run it as is to create this Swiss roll. Now the question is, as we do dimension reduction, how much of the Swiss roll are we able to capture? So just as a comparator, I know what I was talking about in the previous slide, is that we could do our principal component analysis. So from sklearn.decomposition, we import our PCA. And so here we could have our, um, two components, for example, and we could fit in transform and see how much of the variance is explained. So this taking this data that it was been generated here and running our PCA, just so you can see how much of the variance ratio is explained. We can also plot that information with the scatter plot. So we're taking X underscore PCA, which is the fitted um, dimension reduction model. And all we're doing is pulling, uh, we did it two dimensions. I'll just say we did it two components here so that we can plot a scatter plot, which is two dimensions. So the reason you have two components in this example is simply so we can look at a visual here as a scatter plot because one component is here and the other component is here to plot that. Okay, so that's all you're seeing with this graph. Okay, so here's how much of the Swiss roll is maintained. Uh, we explain 71% of the variability in the original image with the principal component analysis method. Now let's look at isomap. So isomap, we said, does keep the topology that the PCA doesn't keep. So you don't get from this little swirl here that it is that roll. Um, so we kind of lose that information there. So with the isomap, what we're doing is from sklearn.manifold, we import isomap. If we want to be able to visualize the Swiss roll, we're going to be stuck with two components. You can, of course, uh, have more than this. But if this is something you're going to visualize, you're kind of stuck with two. Um, and then we can fit and transform those same Swiss roll points that we had before. So that's just our data. 
Now, when it comes to isomath, what you are going to use to figure out if it's good or bad is something called reconstruction error. So when we look at reconstruction error, this is how much information is lost when the dimension reduction happens. So whereas the PCA had that estimated variance ratio, you can see which percentage was kept, with these methods, we don't have that number. So we have what is called reconstruction error, how much information is lost with the dimension reduction. And so we can compare, for example, the isomap and the uh, LLE method in terms of how much information is lost. Uh, but it's, you can't quite compare these two with a number. Uh, we can just compare in terms of the visual. So if we look at this here, we get an ISO uh, reconstruction error of 20.4. Is that good or bad? Well, you could change, for example, the number of components to see if you can uh, get that reconstruction error even lower. Lower is better. Uh, that's less loss uh, from doing this transformation, this dimension reduction. If we plot the information, so if we plot this ISO, this ISO map, um, dimension reduced and so again we have dimension reduced it to two dimensions so that's why we can plot it on this visual here the x and y axis that's the information we're pulling we're plotting as a scatter plot so what we can see here that's lost in the other one is this is essentially like unfolding that swiss roll if we had unrolled it this is what it would look like so you can see how the purple leads to the dark blue to the lighter blue to the green to the yellow and this connection between these data points here when we look at the PCA we can see the color transition but we don't see the depth of that um, and that it's more than just these couple points here here you can see that there's this connection all the way throughout right all these points connect to this so essentially it's unrolling the Swiss roll. And that's how we can maintain that topography by basically unrolling the image. Large, or sorry, local linear embedding. Okay, in local linear embedding, if we go back, so just to remember, local linear embedding ha does nearest neighbors, whereas the ISO map is more geodesic uh, in its looking at its relationships. We can do the same with our Swiss roll. We can look at it. So from sklearn.manifold, import local linear embedding. We're going to do two components again, just so we can visually look at it on our scatter plot. So local linear embedding number of components equals two. We'll call it LLE. We'll fit and transform it on the Swiss roll data points. That'll give us the X underscore LLE. We can see with this particular one that the reconstruction error is much smaller. So we maintain more information this way. We can create a scatter plot here. You can see that it, it has that similar unrolling, um, but it's able to maintain um, more of the information. The last one we want to look at in terms of dimension reduction methods, so if we just go back to our original list, is something called T-distributed stochastic neighbor embedding, T-S-N-E. Okay, it is also a nonlinear method. The way that T-S-N-E works is that it is limited to two components, so the ISO map and the, um, the local linear embedding are not limited to two. We were just doing two so we could see the visual that's attached to them. Uh, and, uh, but with the TSNE, it is limited to two components. And the reason it exists, it is to help visualize high dimensionality problems. Where you see TSNE move, used, oh my goodness, I can't talk. Where it is often used is in genetics, cancer research. So if we get into medical research where we have thousands of variables, uh, where we're doing gene, we're looking at genomics. So there, there's lots of different right proteins, genes, there are thousands of variables. And so we need to do dimension reduction 
But often what we need to do is simply say, classified as have an issue, don't have an issue, have a disease, don't have a disease. We're doing, we're classifying it, right? With two variables, binary, has it or doesn't. Um, and so we'll use the TSNE method there to do dimension reduction down to two for our classification models when you're dealing with lots of genes and proteins, thousands of variables can be reduced down. The benefit of course, is that you can visualize that high dimensionality problem and it doesn't have to have linear relationships between them. So all those different genes and proteins don't have to have linear relationships between them. What you do with the TSNE is that you will specify the level of perplexity so this then is how many nearest neighbors are considered. The larger your data set, the more nearest neighbors that you want. And we talked about this before we talked about K nearest neighbors, is that if you have a big data set, you can have a bigger K. If you're okay with having more smoothed out boundaries in terms of your classes, then you go with a higher K, higher perplexity. If you want it to have, you know, that, you want it to be very flexible and and so the actual classes you know kind of can have weird shapes then you would want to have much smaller k for your classification model you want much smaller perplexity so you can have a small number it, the smallest it goes is five and you can or you can have high perplexity and so it's going to look at a large number of data points around it smooth out the boundaries for the classes that's going to be a higher perplexity. So here you can see this is a perplexity of five. This is a perplexity of 30 from that Swiss roll. So if we were to go back here, we would go from sklearn.manifold import TSNE. And then if we're going to simply do, in this case, we're doing two components because we want to graph it right on a scatter plot. Um, but of course, TSNE is bound to two. Um, and that's what you're using if you're doing like, if you're trying to identify condi medical conditions, right? Has it or doesn't. So we'll go here with a perplexity of five, a lower one. Okay, this is then just a small number of nearest neighbors. So it allows for it to have strange shapes. And we will call it, we will fit it on our Swiss roll points. We will plot it on our scatter plot by plotting our two components here. Of course, the first one's got to finish before the second one can go. And so here you get your different, uh, the uh, your Swiss roll um, in terms of that dimension reduction. Just as a comparison, if we increase the perplexity to 30, for example, and ran it again, takes longer. All right, and then plotted it. And so you get a different view in terms of um, the results of that dimension reduction. So you can get different relationships here depending on if you have very small perplexity. So you're just doing the smallest amount of data points nearby. And then if you're doing large amounts of data points nearby, then really it's going to start capturing just these bigger uh, relationships.